Canada's political landscape is sometimes described as a two-party plus system, with two major parties vying for power and numerous smaller parties consistently winning seats but not in contention for the Prime Minister's office. Additionally, there are fringe parties which never win seats but still win a few thousand votes every election. Despite having large parties, a unique aspect exists. Big Ten parties which encompass individuals with conflicting political ideas, united in usually one or two big common ideas. For example, look at these two conservative politicians that I'm about to put on screen. These two politicians both belong in the same political party. I would stop the misogynist practice of sex-selective abortion. I support women having a choice. And the same phenomenon is observed in the NDP, where members may share a party, but might greatly differ in their views. Canada's first-past-the-post system reinforces Big Tent parties by encouraging collaboration to consolidate support in specific ridings. Introducing a proportional representation system, where parties just had to earn votes on a province-wide or federal scale, and secure seats by passing a threshold, let's say 4%, could potentially lead to the breakup of these Big Ten parties into smaller parties with its members agreeing on almost all policy. If you want to learn more about proportional representation, I made a video about proportional representation, which you can watch after this one. Now without further ado, Let's delve into the specifics of Canada's political landscape under proportional representation and what Canada would look like with 10 or more parties. The Socialist Alliance would be a party for the far left of the Canadian political spectrum. There aren't many politicians that match up with the Socialist Alliance, but the most prominent politician that could fit the bill is Nikki Ashton. They would probably be very much pro-union and generally promote democratic socialists to socialist policies. If you think about the NDP's Socialist Caucus, they would probably just literally be what they are, just operating as their own party. They would be a lot like the modern NDP, just with support for more extreme positions that Jagmeet Singh would not advocate for, like very pro-Palestine, support of the Cuban Revolution, and even some support for withdrawing from NATO. The party that I have given the name of the Progressive Party would look a lot like the mainstream NDP, might even just be named the NDP. They'd probably have some current liberal supporters move there from the further left of the party. Um, I'm, a, I'm a liberal and a proud socialist, Mr. Speaker. But more on that later. They would support more policies on climate action, social programs, and things like that. But they wouldn't be as focused on climate change as... This would basically be the same as the current Green Party, left-wing in general, with a strong emphasis on climate change. Again, exactly like right now. Their goal would be to earn leverage in coalitions so that they could get climate policy passed. So they would probably be key partners with the Progressives and the Socialist Alliance. So the Liberal Party will never cease to exist. They've been in power for most of our existence. They will always exist in some form as long as Canadian democracy exists. But due to the rise of more ideological parties and parties that take up the left-wing and right-wing support that the Liberals might have, I think the Liberals would be, in a sense, forced into the center. They would advocate for social progressivism without being too anti-socially conservative and maintaining support for free speech, and they would also be fiscally centrist. This party would be a lot like the Maori party in New Zealand. They would probably advocate for very specific indigenous interests, not as much in a left-right way, but in a way of advocating for issues which impact indigenous Canadians. Their goal would be to gain leverage as a way to promote indigenous issues in government if they could hold the balance of power. They would likely be more friendly to the left, but probably wouldn't be opposed to working with the right. They would exist in the same way that they do right now. I will just ignore them for the sake of time. The Conservative Party today used to be two parties, the Progressive Conservative Party and the Reform Party. The Progressive Conservative Party in this age would be fiscally somewhat right-wing, but support LGBTQ and abortion rights. It would be the party of the Erin O'Toole's, Michelle Rempel's, Scott Aitchison's of this world. They would also probably adapt more to left-wing climate change policy, maybe supporting some form of carbon pricing, like Erin O'Toole did in 2021. Just like the older Reform Party, they would be a lot like the Progressive Conservative Party, but more tolerant towards social conservatism, and maybe even a bit socially conservative themselves, just without it as a focus, but also be a lot more right-wing fiscally, 
you know, a lot more capitalist, anti-union, anti-social program, and populist. They would also advocate for Western interests and probably take up the pro-oil mantle. They could also maybe advocate for some form of provincial autonomy, and if it hadn't been implemented already, some form of Senate reform. They would probably be somewhat like reform, but would be very focused on life issues. Look at Campaign Life Coalition. This party would basically be the CLC movement. They would promote socially conservative ideas like anti-abortion, anti-gay marriage, anti-transgenderism, and other more socially conservative policies. This party would advocate to religious people, particularly conservative Catholics and Protestants in Canada. They would be different from the Reform Party as they would have a main focus on life issues while still adopting some economic policy, maybe even some left-wing policy, like maybe some Medicare, social programs, and benefits for single pregnant women, etc. And yes, I know the Christian Heritage Party exists, but this party would probably start fresh with a name without Christian in the name as to try to appeal to as many as they could. Finally, there would be the People's Party. They would be like right now, but I could see them going even further to the right. They would likely occupy the fringes of Canadian politics and be a party for, for a lack of a better term, right-wing extremists. They would, like right now, focus on immigration and culture issues, with less of a focus on social issues or the economy. They would be a lot like the AFD in Germany, a party that no one is really willing to work with, and is very nationalist, populist, and anti-immigration. What do you think? Tell me about it in the comments below. Also, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, as that helps me out a lot. But apart from that, have a good rest of your day, and see you.